Good morning, folks. Today we've got solar radiation storms at Earth, a watch for more, a newly discovered moon in our solar system, electric clouds, and another round of food watch. But we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're checking out the last 24 hours on our star. No major eruptions, or minor ones for that matter. Top watch today is for the plasma filaments turning to center disk position. They are a significant eruption threat, especially the biggest one out ahead. And a bit behind that you'll see more, and at the limb you see another one growing. It appears they'll keep coming for the next seven days or so. Solar flaring is a dud because the sunspots remain weak and alpha magnetic. But behind those two we saw yesterday, on the north we have small development that was born a beta class lateral spreader, and we'll have eyes on that one today. Coming to the solar wind, you see orange, purple, and green. That's density, speed, and plasma temperature all stabilizing or heading back down from the peak intensity of the coronal hole stream. While hours of instability were produced in Earth's geomagnetic field, we never saw storm conditions from the impact. It might not be too long before our next one. The departing opening might be segmented, and even if not, northern openings are already visible coming in from the top left. Top story in space weather right now, however, is the ongoing electron storm. Yesterday, we hit a rejuvenation of the flow of negative solar radiation flux, and it's looking like it will continue today, if not jump to even higher levels. Many of you already got the warning about it through your disaster prediction app, and I expect more notifications coming today. 2007 OR10 has a moon. You can see it in the consecutive Hubble shots there. This is important as we briefly check out its orbit around the sun, because apart from Sedna, it looks like just about all the large objects in the Kuiper Belt have a moon. This has incredible implications for the material density out there, where the solar wind slows down and stops and the heliosphere begins to meet interstellar plasma. Up next, likely a bit complex for those not in our global electric circuit interest group, but alas, everyone can take away that scientists are not ignoring this electric sky, and they're furiously bringing forth studies exemplifying how vital of an inclusion in geosciences electricity can be. That electricity will be increasing as the sun heads to sleep and Earth's magnetic field keeps weakening and will allow for more rapid and extreme fluctuations in normal meteorological, seismic, and volcanic swings. The easiest way to track the progression is how we work our world during the paradigm shift away from the last century. This is Food Watch. So starting with some good news. After a horrendous year last year, Peach crops in the Northeast could be ready for a big-time recovery. It's compared to total economic loss last year. But alas, cold weather is bringing that pain to South Carolina, where 85 to 90 percent of the crop is in big trouble. The wheat that wasn't whacked in the central U.S. two weeks ago now has caught a cold. Viral outbreaks just the latest strife in that region. More cherry trouble as well, and he's joined by the early asparagus crops that most asparagus eaters rely on this time of year. And lastly, rain damage just this month in Arkansas is nearing $200 million for the crops alone. Speaking of adverse weather, those storms alerted two days ago for Europe ended up ripping atrocious thunderstorms across Germany. Train derailed, highway closed due to mudslide, and airline passengers slept on cots due to canceled flights. Tonight, the big storm watch is still that central U.S. Earth spot, just going to continue to be nasty from before sunset through the morning hours tomorrow. Don't forget, registration for Observing the Frontier 2018 is now open. All the fan favorites, new scientists make their debuts, and the best topics in our community will be broken down at a consumable level. I'll see you in the desert. Website members, yesterday's Fly on the Wall podcast is probably a top 10 episode. If you are not yet a member, consider getting hundreds of hours of material for the price of a Big Mac. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.